Right, so um, this is a survey for this vast insight at Air Park. Um, we're doing a lot of work with these. Um, at Moor Town are doing the kind of groundwork. Vast are building these fantastic prefab buildings. All very nice, top end offices. The council have just redone all the surrounding roads, but they've got to put entrances out onto the roads now. So they need a survey showing the kerb levels, channel levels, footpath, but also a lot of levels in the road where they're tying into. And as you can see, if you spin round like you've probably seen behind me, the traffic doesn't stop and this is the side road the main road up there there's four or five lanes all together so in order to do a survey getting the levels we need we need traffic management which is going to cost a fortune when you're putting people in the road whereas if we use a mobile mapping system we can scan it and then draw the survey after from the point cloud that's the benefit if we started using mobile mapping for road surveys last year for getting in the carriageway detail without putting people in danger but previously we've had to do it on a vehicle, which can cause issues because you've got to drive up and down loads of times. Whereas with this on a small site, it's about 400 meters to do in all, but we can just kind of walk round with it on the footpath where we're safe, high vis on, just like a normal pedestrian. And this scanner will get 100 meters in every direction. Plus it gets 10 images per second. So we can draw the survey from that, we can create digital models from that and it just gives a better safer result if we need to put it on a vehicle to do more we can do but for this job it's just about another little walk with my little survey friend here charlie. yeah charlie <laughs> i don't know who's got the better task charlie or the dog right so that's the kind of site plan we've been given different surveys areas for different people but it's basically a horseshoe shape around the bottom of the site so we'll walk around, scan it. It uses a GPS to give us a position. We can post-process that. But because this site's on a local grid, what we'll probably do just for ease of it is once we've scanned it, we'll have a look at the data and then come back and just pick up a few points with the total station, just to use this control, almost if it were a totally local grid because the GPS is slightly off. And again, it's a bit more accurate for the levels tying it in with a total station. So that's what we do. It's all about the accuracy with surveys. To use it, it's just a web browser. So we connect it up to the Wi-Fi of the device. And then it's like a closed network. We just go in to Chrome or whatever it is on your phone. Go onto the app. There we are. Go on the settings. I should have brought a bigger tablet. But you've got pedestrian, pedestrian GPS, motorised GPS. We're on pedestrian GPS. We could put it on high cameras. It just gets you more images. You always get the same quality of images. So there's four. 24 megapixel cameras around it I and mean, it's got a flash on it so you can use it at night you can change that to a flashing beacon to alert people that we're working which we'll probably do here because we're near the road so we'll just create a project and we'll just call it air park create a scan and i'll just go through the nice interesting bar so we can go into our project new scan it's all set with the gps now works for any web browser Let's try and get some ar glasses for a hands-free experience because we need hands available for doggies so once it picks up enough satellites and it's comfortable then it will we'll start to scan so that shows where we are yeah. right we'll go start on this junction you can change a few settings if you're working inside you can put the flash on and that flashes quicker quicker than the human eye can see so it doesn't actually cause any damage we can put that on so that will the beacon will kind of flash as he's walking round. Or we can even look on the map view, the satellite view, the scan view, which will drop in in a second. And that shows what the LiDAR is picking up now. So if you're inside, you kind of use that to see what you're picking up. It's not the greatest picture. But if we go on the map, all you do to start it, press that, wait until it's gone. Well, I've got a big phone, but the circle will go round. And now we're scanning, you see, four or five seconds. Yeah. Get that to Charlie, and away he goes. Same as any kind of slam. It does help a bit if you kind of Crossover, no, you see it flashing because he's working. Yep, that's the mode I set it on. And he'll just kind of walk around, crossover loops and stuff, and the GPS will pick up. No, you don't have to stop it, it's a global shutter on the camera. So you can just keep moving. You can be on a, a little scooter, or a little buggy, or a boat, whatever you need. If you're going down a tunnel where the slam wouldn't be effective and you've got no GPS, you can put a prism on the top and track it with a, a, a robotic total station like you would with a like machine control dozer or something like that. You just 
have the total station to track it and kick out and like a pseudo NMEA report. But yeah, we can do it in kind of loops or whatever and, and crossing over and however just to help the slam a bit so you're getting it from different directions. If we're moving as well, we're erroneous kind of points in the point cloud, so it'll delete it. So that car, because it's moving, it'll delete out the point cloud automatically. There's no extra post-processing for that needed. So the idea is safer technology, quicker surveys. So we did a, a railway station yesterday that had taken maybe 10 hours to do traditionally, the robotic, and we've scanned it in 20 minutes. It's sub-centimetre accuracy. So you don't really need to, you don't need the phone on, even once you've started it, it's just like a Wi-Fi link. Cross between topo surveying and laser scanning because you're, you're kind of walking it like you would a topo survey but you need to think of it like you're scanning because you need to avoid shadow so if you've got like a so right when he's walking there he's getting the opposite channel you know what I mean so then when he's done that he'll have to go like on the traffic islands and down the central reservation to get this channel if that's what you need you, you survey what you can see rather than with a, a topo pole you can kind of just go around and get it but the time saved, you'd be a day at least out surveying this, even if there were no traffic, and you're not going to get anywhere near the detail. And because the scan data is mixed in with images, you don't have the issue that you normally have on point clouds where you, you might not know what type of cover it is, where you've got a high resolution image that'll tell you. And it'll also pick up all these spray paint marks as well on the images. Whenever you're walking near traffic, or in a more dangerous area, walk towards the traffic so you can see it.